Okay, so here I am with my iPhone, and I thought this would be a good place to start. So some things that you might notice. I have the phone in a vertical position. I have it just in my hand, so it, it might be a little wobbly, I apologize. Uh, my head is a little cut off. Um, I have just basic overhead lighting, and for... My set, I am right up against this wall. So this would be a good place to start. So I think with just a few simple tips, we can drastically improve the look and feel of your video. All right, so tip number one, rotate your camera horizontal. So that'll get that 16 by nine look that we're used to with most TVs and now I'm holding it up so my angle is a little bit different. So instead of that extreme low angle where I was sort of looking down in the camera, now it's more eye level. And I'll go into tip number two, um, a tripod. So instead of me just holding the camera, I picked up a tripod. I think this one was under $10. So with that, I can lock in the camera and so instead of the wobble or my arm getting tired, that'll just make everything easier. Okay, here I am with the tripod. And so I have it, that little tripod right now, resting on an ironing board. And so with the camera locked in, now I can just move myself in position. So instead of cutting my head off, now I can reposition. So I'm center of the frame. I can see I have some little bit of space over here. And what I'm really noticing now is these this harsh shadow and this background um, has no depth. It's just very boring. I almost feel like I'm in a mugshot. So that'll be the next tip. Tip number three is just basic set design and where we could put the camera. So there's a little bit of separation from you in the background and maybe just a little bit of something interesting instead of just, just this weird white background. Okay, so I've rotated myself. I am no longer against that back wall. I just repositioned. So now there's a little bit of depth and some visual interest going on back here. I'm no longer against that white wall. Like I, I'm no longer in a mug shot. Um, so that alone definitely just helps the overall look and feel. It just feels better like I don't feel so trapped in the in the frame but what you might notice is this light is a very harsh so this is just the overhead light and if I put my hand up here you can see you know that the light is coming here you can see the shadow on my face so that is the main lighting source so tip number four will be a three-point light setup so we'll set up the key light the fill light and like a like a background light to help separate me from the background okay and i am back so now i have my three-point light set up and it's just like the name implies there's three different lighting sources i have so instead of that one harsh light now i have uh the main key light i have a little reflector so it's just filling out that light on this side of my face so it's not so much in shadow and I have a little, like a hair light. So if I put my hand here, you can kind of see, let's see, you can kind of see the shadow that it's making. So that's just giving me a little bit more depth. And so what's good about this setup is that now I am well lit and the background is in more or less shadow. So that helps give some separation and helps things not feel so flat and it's funny so I'll go into the next tip it is to actually light for the iPhone I originally filmed this this little bit and I, I did the lighting setup like I would uh, like a video camera like DSLR and it was way too dark it was very grainy and it just didn't look right so that's the the tip make sure that you bump up your light source so from that I learned I need to bump up this light a lot. And so I do have a little cool uh, 
remote for the light and you can see what this actually looks like if I turn it off. And so now you can really see this hair light. That's what's lighting. It's giving me a little bit of light here and it's lighting my shoulder there. And now with it back on, it seems bright. Now with it back on, you can see the lights from there and it's coming, it's bouncing off of this little reflector. And in doing that process, I would say the next tip is to get feedback as fast as possible. So if I didn't know that and you know it just waited too long, I, I couldn't uh, make the adjustment. So luckily I was able to get into uh, Premiere and see what was happening. So that would be a tip is to get feedback as fast as possible and iterate and it's a learning process. So that was immensely helpful. The next tip is, since I'm here, the next tip is framing. So now instead of being just dead center, um, I've just moved myself over a little bit. So now I'm on the, the third. So it's the, the rule of uh, three for framing. And so now I'm on just this side and I have a little bit of headroom. And so I like my framing here. The next tip is color correction. So I have this little card. It's got white on one side, it's got gray on the other. And with that, in the editing software, I can, once I get to this section, I can point to this is a, a true white. And so the the editing software is smart enough that you can point to this and then it'll adjust accordingly of what is an actual white. So it just makes the editing process and color correction that much easier. Talking about color, my next tip is to be mindful of wardrobe. So right now I have a white shirt and it kind of gets lost in this sea of white there's not much color going on it's kind of boring and also i don't know if you notice i have my sleeves were purposely distracting so being mindful of what you're wearing is another good tip it just besides a, a pop of color make sure you don't have anything that's too distracting and taking away from your message and so the next tip i have is to change your eye line so where you're looking and instead of looking at yourself which just kind of happens automatically if you could just train yourself to look where the camera is it'll boost your production value it'll just seem like it's more um, of a higher quality standard and so now that you're looking at the camera the next tip i have is once you make your thought just sit and pause you can smile if you like just pause at the camera and that'll alleviate that as soon as you're done talking and then you're lurching forward for the stop button and so once you go to edit it, it'll be so hard to back that up that you're finishing your thought, but then you're moving forward and it's like distracting with your, with your hand. So once you want to say what you want to say, just give it a beat, just rest there and it'll make the whole editing process so much easier. Okay. And I'm back. And now I have my pop of color and you might also notice I turned on the monitors. And so that'll help also with that depth of field so things aren't so flat. So if you think about where we started with that white wall, now we have a little bit of color, color on me and the background has its own color and it just helps give that little bit of space and separation. And so we can go into more uh, manual adjustments. And it, could, it sounds a little intimidating, but it's, it's very easy. And they actually have apps that make it so much easier. So I have an app called Filmic Pro and I think it was about $15. And with that, I'm able to control what's in focus. I'm able to control the white balance easier right in the camera. And so with the, the auto setting with the iPhone, if you move it around, things can change focus. Um, if there's a cloud or something happens with your lighting source, it changes automatically. So being able to lock that down just will just make it so much more professional and with the filmic pro it's easier to access the uh the 4k capabilities of the phone there's just a couple buttons and so i'll show you what it looks like using the filmic pro next and it'll be in full 4k and it should look pretty cool okay and we're back now i'm using the filmic pro app and I have an iPhone 10, and with that, I'm able to film in full 4K, which is pretty impressive. And with some of the manual options, I'm able to lock in my focus, and with a little editing magic, I can make the background a little uh, more 
out of focus, a little bokeh. Um, with the manual, I'm able to control the white balance and the frame rate. It just gives it more options. And I think it looks pretty good, especially when you think about how far we've come from the very beginning with that weird angle and the stark wall. And now with just some small tweaks like lighting and set design for depth and a little bit of wardrobe and just some framing and eyeline, we've come a long way. And I think this video looks really good. And it didn't take fancy gear or I didn't need a, you know, DSLR, I didn't need really any fancy cameras. And we were able to do a lot. And so far we've talked about the visual aspect. So next I'm gonna talk about the audio. Right now I'm just using the native iPhone mic and it's okay. But the next tip would be, if possible, to use like a shotgun mic or a lav mic, something that would be directional and capture your voice or your subject's voice better. So right now I'm in a pretty quiet room, but if it was, if there was more sounds, if it was louder, then the mic would capture all of that. That's the, the benefit of those little mics, that they can be directional and capture just what you want to capture. So if you have an idea, just go for it. It can be easy to procrastinate and say that I don't have this or I don't have that, but part of it is just going out there and doing it and learning it. And as you can see, these small little changes can make big improvements.